Armed with the Ryzen AI365, we finally meet head-to-head -head with the next generation of upper mid-tier mini PCs. Would not be great for Windows use, but with the new Radeon 880M, is it a worthy update? In this video we'll unbox, check out performance, tear the whole thing down, and let you know if this mini PC ticks all the boxes. Can the 880M deliver? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. This box here came from Minix. Nothing of monetary value has exchanged hands, and this was sent to us in exchange for an honest video review. So let's get cracking, shall we? First impressions, this box looks very premium, and you'd never guess how many sides it has. Um, two, um, let's see what's inside. Ooh, we'll agree to a user guide in multiple languages, and this goes through setup and specs, and covers the 365, as well as the HX370 variant of mini PC. And this thing here is pretty difficult to get out. Like my stick. Thanks, John, but a little too much information. So here's the mini PC itself, and it looks pretty beasty. Look at that. We also get a mount so we can slap it on the back of a monitor, under a desk, or something like that. And at the bottom of the box, a very nice looking HDMI cable. We have a power cable, as well as a power brick, and this one's from Hunky, a reliable switching power adapter that outputs at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, and a maximum of 120 watts, and it uses the barrel jack. On these here, the screws to the mount. So let's have a closer look. The black case seems to be made of a metal alloy, and the overall angular design and Minix logo have a very pleasing aesthetic, making it ideal for the minimalist or in an office. It's pretty heavy at 936 grams, but let's take a look at the front. At the top we have two microphone holes, just in case you need to speak to your parents in an emergency. And we have BIOS reset pinhole, USB-C 4, two sets of USB 3.2 Gen 2, a combo audio jack, and the power switch. Yeah, it clicks. Nothing around here, but the back is where all the action is. We have the air holes for exhaust, and Kensington. Kensington? Right, oh yeah! Along the bottom we have two ports for 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN, another USB 3.2 Gen 2, DisplayPort 2.0, HDMI 2.1, another USB 4 in Type-C, and on the very end, a barrel jack for power. On the left side there's nothing much again, but if we swivel around to the bottom, ooh, what? What is this? We've got a couple of holes for the mount, air holes for cooling, and a rubber lip to open the case. Before connecting the computer up, let's take a look at the specs. And this is extremely promising. The O936 has a Ryzen AI9 365 in it, which seems to be a slightly cut down version of the HX370 that destroyed the Zen 4 competition. It has 10 cores, boosts up to 5 GHz, and also uses the 5C cores, which should make this extremely power efficient. The faster GPU should give better performance in games, and we'll be able to switch out memory and storage if we want to upgrade. But it's about time for the size comparison. The Minix Ur936 is slightly larger and taller than the B-Link EQ13. It's roughly the same size as the GMK Tech K11, and here's a 3.5 inch floppy disk. Oh, tanks and stuff, what a game. Here it is compared to the very popular Game Boy. Cuter? You want it cuter than Kirby? You asked for it. The MiU. Mini Plus, with Torakin 2, and it's about double the width. And let's not forget, a Typhoo tea bag. The Mini Air 936 is around four tea bags big. And I'm gonna have a cup of tea in a sec. Woohoo! Once we connect it to a monitor, speakers, and a keyboard or trackpad, we can turn it on, and we're greeted to the Windows setup screen. This is pretty simple, we just select our language, the location, and then we're asked to log into our network. I'd like to check the computer for viruses before giving it full access, so we can skip this by pushing Shift and F10, then type UBE backslash bypass NRO. We can then continue without network access, and it load up Windows. It might take a few minutes, but once we're in, we can see that the specs do check out, as the Ryzen 9 365, 32GB of RAM, and Windows is activated. Windows Defender ran without any issues, and it found no malware in a full scan. And this also applies to malware bytes, and a vast. No viruses here. We can then log into Wi-Fi to update Windows, install the latest drivers, and we can actually test the PC. In Windows, this computer is extremely snappy and handles tasks like Office with ease. But as we have a powerful CPU, it's extremely competent when it comes to music production. Editing videos in DaVinci Resolve,
or YouTube in 4K. But now let's take a look at some benchmarks. The Era 936 comes out swinging with some impressive Geekbench scores, but as it beats the multi-core and some of the AI scores of the 370, the question we need to ask is why? Is the cooling better on the Minix, or has the TDP been set higher? The Era 936 didn't do too well in Time Spy, but Cinebench gave us a clear indication that the Minix could use then 10 cores better than most of the competition. Here's the results for a blender. And we also have some fairly decent speeds from our NVMe. It's not the fastest we've seen for PCA4, but it'll do pig, it'll do. For the Wi-Fi strength, we got around 75%. Again, pretty average performance, but we didn't get disconnected from either our Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So let's pair up our controller and play some games. First up, Dave the Diver in 4K. It plays great. At this resolution, most 2D games will run really well, unless you have a title, of course, that stresses the GPU. For example, Ori and the Will of the Wisps will play at full speed at 4K unless special effects are on screen. But if we lower to 1440p, full speed all the way. Dota 2 at 1080p best looking shows that the Euro 936 is definitely capable of playing some thinking games. But if you'd rather fight some demons, here's Diablo 4. It tended to be high, frame rate stays around 40, and if you want it buttery smooth, try FSR 1. As we jump off the bus in Fortnite, we're around 100 FPS when our graphics are set to tend to be far and high. And Snake is definitely a very happy chappy. making Fortnite, even at 1440p resolution, extremely playable. In Marvel Rivals at 1080p medium settings, we get around 25 FPS. So choosing FSR or a lower resolution is definitely recommended. And to bump that even further, we can use Frame Gen. Tekken 8 at 1080p medium settings gives good performance, unless many visual effects are on screen. We can see this very clearly in the third round of the plaza stage. And if we alter a few of these settings, full speed. Next up is Counter-Strike 2, 1080p low settings. And as you can see here, this is very playable. Just to excuse my poor skills. I was just, you know, using this tiny little mouse and, uh, yeah. Oh, so you want some AAA titles? How about Call of Duty Black Ops 6? Kind of feels a bit like Goldeneye. And next up, is Cyberpunk 2077 77. At 1080p medium settings, we're getting around 35 FPS. But if we select FSR 3 with frame gen, over 60. Meow. Enough about games, let's check the BIOS. And the one that Minix has provided is actually very basic. While they did include things like fan control, there is no micromanagement, so no slopes or things like that nor are there any VRAM or TDP settings. We do, however, have Secure Boot for Valorant, and without much effort, we can load up an alternative OS like Badassera Linux. Badassera 41 loads up without any issues. As you can see, the Wi-Fi connects to our Monkey Balls network, and we can also pair up our 8-bit dope Bluetooth controller for some emulation action. Fell all the way to ground level. Like ScumVM. Phew. Commodore Amiga Upscaled PSP Missile. 
PlayStation 2. Or even the higher tier, like PlayStation 3. But how are the CPU temps and noise? Well, idle around 43 degrees Celsius, and it's very quiet indeed. Have a listen. And it pulls around 9 watts from the wall. In game, things do heat up a little, and it gets a little noisier. And it uses around 87 watts. Then, if we stress test both the CPU and GPU, we're sat at around 82 degrees. But as we have active cooling, there's no thermal throttling, but things get a little noisier. And it pulls 83 watts from the wall. What? That makes no sense. So let's have a look inside. To open this thing up, we need to turn it over. And as you can see, there's no screws visible. And the magic thing is this little rubber tab here. All you gotta do is pull it up. And that's it. At first I thought this was screwed on, but the bottom plate here is made of metal and it forms a strong bond with the case magnetically. Let's get in further by giving these a twist. As we remove this, we need to be a bit careful, as a small fan here is connected to the motherboard. Now that's out of the way, we can see what's inside. On the left we have the memory, two sticks of DDR5. In the middle are NVMe storage. And on the right, another M2 PCIe4 slot, in case you want to upgrade our system with another stick. In order to do so, we just remove the screw, get a PCIe NVMe, and then pop it in. And as we have a fan, Everything here will have adequate cooling. But now let's dig a bit deeper. If we remove four of these screws, we can take out this plastic plate. What we have here is a Kingston PCIe4 NVMe, a well-known reliable budget brand. Now let's check the memory. And again, Kingston. It's good to see that Minix hasn't filled the products with generic brands. Now let's move on to the Wi-Fi chip. As mentioned earlier, it uses the Wi-Fi 6E, and this one is a MediaTek MT7922. In order to get in deeper, we need to pull off this tape, which sticks the main board to the side of the case. We need to do that on both sides, then we can pull out the board. So yeah, it's pretty clean. Apart from removing the tape, we have easy access. To get to the CPU, we'll need to remove a few more screws using a small posi driver. And now to remove the heatsink. If we check the board, there only seems to be four screws holding it on, so let's remove them. Easy. And there we have it. So for maintenance purposes, you can easily get in here to change a the thermal paste if you need to. We're just going to clean up here and then apply some MX6 to see if we can lower temps as well as system noise. Yeah, lovely. But after changing thermal paste, there were no real changes to our temperatures or noise. So if we want to get a much quieter system, we need to lower graphic settings in-game, limit frames to 60, or lower the power that the system can use. As we don't have TDP options in the BIOS, we need to use this free tool, the Universal x86 Tuning Utility. It's quite simple, just download and install it, then adjust the TDP as you wish. As the 365 has a default TDP value of 28, that's what we'll choose here. We can select anywhere from 15 to 54 watts according to AMD specs with this processor. And now we've got lower temps in the stress test, as well as much better temps in games. Well, we started off at 80 degrees, 40 decibels of noise, and we brought that all the way down to 65 degrees Celsius and 33 decibels, making a very quiet computer. It's about time for the pros and the cons. Minix have really nailed the build quality on this one. The case feels solid, well put together, and it's also super easy to access the internals. Inside we have active cooling for the memory and NVMe slots, and those branded components add a layer of trust and reliability, which you don't always get in mini PCs. As for the cons, it's mainly the lackluster BIOS. An addition of TDP choice alone will allow users to fine tune performance or noise levels. Having no Oculink limits external GPU support, and the price is slightly on the higher side. While the Minix R936 is a solid mini PC overall, the 880M feels more of a small step forward than a major leap. We've left the links down below, and we'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Summary! We got a box from Minix Town Black metal case, it's from another town Looks so clean like it wake up the dead There's a mounted to your mom's forehead Two M2s and a two fast land Branded memory like Fireman Sam Windows 11 Pro feeling totally
If you got this far into the video, thanks for watching. And also a huge thank you to all of those on our Patreon. These are the guys that keep the lights on and the content coming. If you want to help support our channel for the price of a coffee each month, please join up. Or how about one of these? Mmm. Yeah. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!